And now, HBO Sports presents Legendary Knights, the tale of Gaddy Ward. Great fighters die like everyone else. Their lives end. Sometimes naturally, sometimes not so naturally. And they're laid to rest like everyone else. But you see, what makes great fighters different is what they leave behind. The memories of the nights they stepped into the ring and did things with their body and their heart that shouldn't have been possible. No one who sees them ever forgets nights like those. No one who's a part of them would ever want to. Packing up our sport coat and a suit on, heading to the Boxing Hall of Fame for uh, the inductions on Sunday. Toro Gaddy's getting in. I go every year, but it's, it's more, um, a little more personal this year because he's going in, so. It's June of 2013, a little more than a decade since Mickey Ward and Toro Gaddy first came together in a boxing ring. It blows my mind just to sit back and think about like all the stuff that's happened, you know? We're fighting in three of the greatest fights in the history of boxing. And then have a movie made about you, and then for the movie, nominated for an Oscar. You know, I'm like, wow. And to think that if I quit back when everyone said, ah, give it up, you know? None of this would have happened. He comes to us tonight from Lowell, Massachusetts, USA, Irish Mickey! Mickey Ward was seven years old the first time he walked into a boxing gym. A month later, the story goes, he was fighting on a card in the next town over. Mickey defined the essence of the journeyman fighter. After all, he was still working as a road grader while his career was going on. In the old days, they would have said he's a club fighter. It gives you action. But he was a serious prize fighter, and he raised 
his game to a place that few fighters of that type or stripe ever do. Irish Mickey Ward with a big eighth round TKO. My brother Mickey Ward, I'd say, he always had class before the fight. You know what I mean? He wouldn't put up at a, the bullshit of, you know, getting into it. He says, oh, just use these, we'll use these, you know? And Mickey wasn't the greatest boxer, but he trained hard. He had the biggest heart, the biggest balls there is. I wasn't a very flashy guy. I wasn't like, I didn't wear tassels. I didn't wear this and that, you know what I mean? And I didn't mind taking the pain, taking the punches. I didn't mind stitches. I didn't mind getting cut. You gotta do what you gotta do to survive, and uh, that's how I fought. Charlene didn't even know I was a fighter. She didn't even like boxing. You know, and it wasn't a big thing for her, like, like, oh, Mickey, what was a fighter and this and that. I wasn't, I was, I wasn't really doing all that great. I mean, I was, I was doing good, but I mean, it wasn't like I was on top of the world or anything when she met me. It was like, you know, I still was driving the uh, Ford Temple. <laughs> but um, she took to it after a while, you know what I mean? He's so shy on the outside. I didn't know that that beast was in there. You know, watching him in the ring was almost seeing a stranger but knowing and seeing him like that and in his element that is who he is that's what embodies mickey is he's a true fighter i named gg after a toro daddy girl gg right come on, come on. yeah He's my best friend in the whole world, huh? Outside of my mom. Huh? My best friend, huh? Huh? Gigi. She's... She's, she's just like a Toro, too. <laughs> Feisty is a bastard. Look at, look at, see? Look at, see that? <laughs> I'm on the Toro. I'm down. <laughs> The real Atoro Gaddy is never known for being calm either. He was born in Italy, raised in Montreal, Canada, and ended up in New Jersey as a 19-year-old in 1991, hoping to become a boxer. Soon after that, he found a manager he trusted and decided to go pro. It's funny, the first time I met him, he told me he was going to be a world champion, which I kind of shrugged off like, yeah, okay, you know, this young 19-year-old kid coming down from Canada already. Not cocky, but confident. This is a young man potentially on the verge of stardom. When Arturo stepped in the ring, there was this electricity around him that just sparked. You had to look. You had to see it. You had to appreciate it. A big, crowd-pleasing fighter. At one point, somebody said he was sort of like boxing's answer to the Grateful Dead. You had this same group of people that kept coming over and over and over, and it got to the point where People would call and just say, when's Gaddy fighting again? They wouldn't even ask us who. Jersey City, New Jersey. Arturo Hunter Gaddy! He was a boxer puncher, but the minute he got, he got hit, the boxing went out the window, and then it was just balls to the wall, you know? It was, it was just kill or be killed. This guy, can you believe This is unbelievable! Right hand landed flush on Gaddy. One thing he never wanted to be is a boring fighter. You know, he, li he liked to get the crowd excited. He liked that style of fighting. He was worried. know you had the stuff in you yeah. to do what you did. I have the heart and I have what it's got to be champion, and I did it. I you proved it tonight again. You <laughs> sure did. Gotti was a world champion by his 23rd birthday. 
but a few years later, he seemed to be breaking down from all the beatings he took. In 2001, it all bottomed out against Oscar De La Hoya. After the De La Hoya fight, the feeling was really that Arturo was at the end of the road. Hey, that he was not going to be able to step up into an elite fight again, and that he was going to have to kind of end it. Bugatti wasn't going anywhere. Instead, he hired a new trainer to turn him from a brawler into a boxer. The former world champion, Buddy McGirt. I had people tell me that why was I wasting my time, that he was finished. I said, well, look, that's your opinion. You're entitled to your opinion. But I see something different in the gym. I said, if you listen to me, you'll be champ again. And he says, I trust you, coach. No problem. So Gaddy looked to be getting a fresh start. But Mickey Ward, now 36 years old and with 11 losses on his record, looked to be on the way out. Until he got a break, a phone call from promoter Lou DiBella. Mickey really never had big promotional representation. Um, there are people that worked with him and, and, and helped him, um, but he never saw any real money. 10, 15,000, 20,000 on a great night. You whack that up with your manager and your trainer and whatever, and you're, you're living at the poverty line, basically. I wanted to work with Mickey because I thought I could get Mickey the big fight, and I had this fantasy in my head for many years of Gaddy and Ward that was plan A, plan B, and plan C. You know, we had another fight with HBO, and we were talking about potential opponents, and, and Mickey's name had come up. And I remember we were looking at the tape, and we talked about it. And he goes, oh, no, no problem. He took one look at it like he thought it was a cakewalk, basically. But the thing about Mickey Ward was that he's going to give a 1,000%. And our matchmaker at the time, Carl Moretti, told me, this is the fight we want to make. Art could beat him, and it's a great fight. I was excited, you know. I knew I wasn't going to back up, and I knew he wasn't going to back up. He was the blood and guts warrior, you know. I was just a warrior, you know. But uh, they weren't worried about me. <laughs> It's about a four-hour trip from Lowell to the Boxing Hall of Fame in Canastota, New York. Mickey Ward will be making his way by plane. Bye. All his closest companions will stay at home. Have fun. All right. Be safe. Hall of Fame weekend is beginning in the rain. And Mickey arrives just in time to catch the end of the opening ceremony. Hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing? How you doing? For all of our past Hall of Famers, all of our current Hall of Famers, let's hear it from your class of 2013. One time, we can have the yard. <laughs> hey, Ray! What's up, man? How you doing? How you been, man? Good, good, good. Good, good, you? Come on inside. I'm Jackson. Right. Vicky, how you doing? How you doing? Good, good. Coming from Boston. This is, yeah, right. this is a big deal for me. Thank you. I'm a big fan. I've Thank seen you. your fights with Gotti oh, yeah. a thousand times. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, this man. is incredible. Thank, Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Think I can get a picture? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, brother. All right. Tonight, we're at the newly renovated and incredibly beautiful Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. May 18th, 2002. I was confident. You know, I couldn't wait to get in and just get it over because I had thought about this fight and fought this fight like so many times in my head. I was ready to go bananas. Many ring observers predict Gaddy Ward will challenge for fight of the year honors. Both fighters have shown willingness to stand toe to toe and trade shots. You have to lean toward Gaddy if you're any kind of boxing guy. And you had, uh, you know, he was the, the fresher guy, the bigger name, the guy uh, more used to things. Uh, but w when you watch Mickey train for the fight, you just sort of had a little sense that, boy, you know, he realizes that this is his moment. I was trying to tell all my friends why this was must-see TV. It was truly an insider's prize fight. I don't know how many of the fans who came to Mohegan Sun that night really understood what they were about to see. 
Mickey and his brother had known for months how they'd come after Gaddy. Game plan was cut the ring off, keep pressure and pressure him, tap the head, shoot to the body, then rip up the head. It's called head, body, head. <laughs> you know, just pressure and he could throw punches all day long. In the other dressing room, Gaddy looked confident, but his trainer had gotten concerned about one punch, a left hook to the liver that Mickey had used to end entire nights before. You know, it's funny. I've never told anyone this, but I'm like, we got this. We got this in the bag. And as I was walking to the fight, I was walking through the lobby, and this guy said, Buddy McGirt. I said, what? And he grabbed the side. He goes, this is Arturo. Ow, it hurts. And the guy fell down. And that shit stayed in my mind. I mean, even though I was wrapping his hands, I'm like, yo, this guy got a fucking point. We got to stay away from that shot. Irish Mickey Ward from up the road in Lowell, Massachusetts. Mickey entered the ring first, getting big cheers from fans who had made the drive 100 miles south from his hometown. The favorite came right after, with his camp looking forward to seeing a new kind of caddy. I remember having a discussion with Buddy about how you're going to box, right? You're not. He's not going to. He's not going to brawl. He's going to box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do this. We got this. We're going to box. Uh, that didn't last long. Oh, everybody's expected a good fight tonight. The fight was scheduled for ten rounds. Ward was known for his slow starts, which he used to get a read on his opponents. With Gaddy, he was impressed with what he saw. Now, Toro would be to the side. He'd like bounce, and he'd be like this, and pop, pop that jab, and very clever. Gaddy firing from all angles. It looks so far as though the merits of Gaddy and Buddy McGirt is paying huge dividends for Arturo's it, basic craft. Absolutely, he looks very good. You know, the first couple of rounds, Mickey was feeling him out. Head movement, double jab. Head movement, double jab. You know, trying to figure out where, where to get his openings and how to turn that fight into a street fight. By the third round, it was a street fight. So it is becoming the slugfest everyone anticipated, despite Arturo Gaddy's skillful efforts to make it a boxing match in the early rounds. Well, I definitely knew that there was going to be a war, but I had no idea that there was another fighter that would leave with their ear hanging off. Get it to the body. Get it. Every single punch increased the punishment each fighter was taking. This is good stuff. And then, at the end of round four, the fight's first pivotal shot landed hard. He caught me right under, like, all your things, you know what I mean? Uh, your testicles, and one of them was, like, hanging off to the side or something. And when he hit me, it, like, got squished out. I thought it was a little bit low. And Frank Cappuccino thought so, too. And he's going to rule no knockdown, and he's taking a point away from Gaddy. Key ruling by Frank Cappuccino. It was a low blow. I knew he, he went down, okay, and I knew he got hit low, okay? That, that is a no-no. I, I know what the hell to do. It's one thing I do. I do know what the hell to do. He wasn't a dirty fighter, you know what I mean? It's, it happens in boxing, you know? And, but I was aggravated because it hurt. I, mean, I felt like I had to go to the bathroom in my pants. <laughs> Truth. It is man against man in there. From, from the fifth round on, we were quite aware that we were watching something genuinely special, uh, memorable, perhaps historic. Oh, look at that! Look at that combination! And Arturo... Oh, Gaddy's right eye is bleeding! This is becoming Mickey Ward's fight. They're fighting in a phone booth, and that's the way he wants it. On the seventh round, I'm like, shit. I, mean, I never asked what round is it, but on the seventh round, I'm like, what round is it? <laughs> look at me, baby. You got this fight. You can rest all day tomorrow, you understand? This is for all the marbles, baby. And a couple times I just had like this at the edge, like this, ready to throw the tower in. Left right combination landed flood. Ward bleeding heavily. And we can just come back. Bow, 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 bow. Gaddy was hurt by a left and her right was hurt. Yeah. And this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you better suck it up. What a fight. What's going through my head after the eighth round? I, I, I'm saying I'm coming back, I'm going to go out there. And I'm gonna tap to the head and rip to the body. That's exactly what I did, and uh, round nine became one of the best rounds in boxing's history, you know? This fight is just turning back and forth so much, and I don't know if Atari's gonna fully recuperate from that volley. 
Well, here, I, I knew he'd still be hurt from round eight. So, like, right here, I want to go to the body. I know he's hurt right here. And I'm tapping up, and boom, right there. That body shot again. That's the body shot. It's when he went down, I'm like, he ain't getting up. And this knockdown counts. You can see the look on Arturo's face. And if you've ever been hit to the body, uh, it's the worst because you can't breathe, but your head is working fine. And so your head is saying, what am I doing on the floor? But your body is saying, stay on the floor. I have never seen anybody else get up from a, a body shot like that. That body shot, that body shot was like a bullet. And you could even see, like, his body just sort of gave, and there was this, like, grimace on his face of agony. Like, he was, you know, the, the second that shot landed, yeah, I thought there was a good chance maybe, you know, that fight would end. But then, you know, it's Arturo. Arturo gets up. He's not gonna recover. It's not like a hand punch. He may not be able to recover. I don't think so. And, and Ward is gonna go right back down there again, right to the body again. I go after him so fast that I ain't gonna fall down almost, trying to get, trying to get him. And, you know, Mickey, you know, started going for the head instead of trying to get that body shot in there again, which gave Arturo time to, you know, catch his energy. Arturo Gatti refusing to go down as Mickey Ward pounds away. Was I scared? Yes, I was. It was so brutal going back and forth that I remember even sliding down in my chair, kind of covering my face and peeking through my fingers. You know, he's, he's throwing punches now like he never been hurt at all. And now Turo coming back. It's amazing. Vicious body shots by Getty. Ward nods as if to say, come on, come on. Come on, let's fight. You know, you don't see rounds like this ever. And going into the last minute, Mickey started having his way with Arturo. Watch it go right back to the body. Just imagine if you bought a ticket. Mickey's eyes bleeding. This looks like a scene from Rocky. This doesn't look like a fight. You don't think that this could actually happen in real life. You know, you dream of fights like this, but the very seldom do they live up to the expectation. This is even more than you could dream of. Mickey being Mickey, he comes back with a 30 points combination. <laughs> Stop it, Frank. You can stop it any time. While I'm shouting, you can stop it any time, Frank. Stop the fight. There's a part of me inside that's saying, stop that. This isn't professional. You know, I, I literally was out of control. Because the fight was out of control. The crowd was out of control. The moment was out of control. Arturo Gatti's out on his feet. Frank Cappuccino's gonna let him keep going. I would've got killed if I stopped that fight. They'd have ruined me. Oh, Jesus, you know, Frank Cappuccino, he, he really shit it up place, you know. And Ward is time. Ward and here comes Gatti back. Less than 10 seconds in the round. Gatti's going to survive the round. This should be the round of the century. You know, every once in a while, somewhere in my life, someone will ask me, What's the greatest fight you've ever called, or what's the greatest round you've ever called, or what's the greatest thing you've ever seen in boxing? And the answer is, Gaddy Ward won, round nine. I think that'll always be the answer. I know it's a toughest fight, Matt. You got it in there. It's okay. I'm on it. Oh, hold on, let go. I thought they were going to stop at the end of the night. I'm not going to let you take this punishment, OK? Now look at me. Look at me, Arturo. I'm looking at him, and tears were coming down his eyes. He said, Coach, just let me get up. If it, uh, he got up, I said, bounce for me. He bounced. And I said, what are you going to do this round? He said, I'm going to box him, Coach. He said, I'll be OK. Buddy said his lower lip was kind of shivering a little bit, so he was getting concerned about that. He said, I didn't like what I just saw. If he takes one punch in this round, I'm stopping the fight immediately. This fight's going to be stopped. I thought someone did this. So I was like, oh. Thank God, I'm there. The fight's over. I'm like, Jesus Christ, you know, I'm like, oh man, I'm like, yeah, it's over. No, it's not. Oh, oh, oh. Fight ain't over. Fight ain't over now. Last round. No, it wasn't over. It really wasn't over. No, 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 no. Fight's not over. Get back in your corner. I go, oh, you son of a bitch. Get back in the corner. Go way right back. All the way back. I thought Buddy McGirt was going to stop it. I know. After now having said go. to his fighter, we wouldn't let him take any more punishment. Now we're going to go. Round 10. Round the confusion was the doctor and the referee are talking at the time. But they're talking to him. They're not talking to me. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what they're saying. Talk English. You know what I mean? 
And then they finally said, buddy, is he okay? I'm like, damn it, it took you that long to say that. So they thought I was stopping the fight, but no, I just couldn't understand what the doctor and the referee were saying. I am humbled by watching these two guys take the punishment they are taking. Well, we told you it might be a candidate for fight of the year. We didn't know it would be a candidate for fight of the century. This is the way it has to end. Arturo Getty, Irish Mickey Ward, two of the most honest fighters in the sport of boxing circa 2002. A fight straight out of the 1950s, a throwback to the golden era of the ring. It seemed almost not right that the judges would decide the result of the fight. But now, Gaddy's fast start, the low blow, the knockdown, all of it would be factored in. I remember Arturo coming to me and saying, what do you think? I said, I, I don't know. It's a toss-up. This could be a draw. I, I could go either way. I really don't know. Judge Frank Lombardi scores the bout. 94, 94, a draw. I thought Mickey had won, and I doubted that we were going to get the decision. Judge Richard Flaherty scores it, 94, 93. All you want to hear is, you know, Irish. That's what you wait for, is to hear the, the Irish, you know? Judge Steve Weisfeld sees it, 95, 93, to the winner by majority decision, Irish Mickey. It was like, oh, thank God. It was so relieving to finally kind of get that, like, that, that tag on me that I had on me for so long of never could win the big one. Yeah, I was just so happy. My little brother from this big comes up and does it. I'm so proud of him, it's unbelievable. I ran out of adjectives and energy, you know, just, screaming and cheering, crying, yelling. I don't think Mickey ever realized that he was that type of a fighter. And to know that finally he's in that class with the Toro, he is like a true warrior. When they announced Mickey as the winner, I was so happy. You know, he'd earned that. He had worked for years for that. His whole life for that. Yeah. It's weird, but I was, I was, I was actually proud of him. You know how tough he was, you know, because I know how hard it is to go through that and continue and for him to do that. I was like, I can actually say I was proud of him for, for being that tough. He just said, Coach, I'm sorry. I said, What are you sorry for? He goes, You know, we, I said, Look, man, it's just the beginning. Don't worry about it. I said, Never mind. I want you to do now is get in the ambulance, go to the hospital, get checked, and I'll see you in a couple weeks. Arturo always said, well, my toughest fight is going to be when I fight someone just like me. And after that fight, he said to me, guess what? I just fought someone just like me. B104.7, Tom and Becky in the morning and uh, having a great weekend. Kickoff here in Canastota, New York at the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Getting underway. The parade culminates on Sunday. Yeah, and in the parade, we're going to see Marvin Hagler, uh, Leon Spinks, a lot of people in town. This place is buzzing. The Hall of Fame Parade of Champions, the famous Hall of Fame Museum. And we are pleased to introduce to you Mickey Ward, the junior welterweight star. Hi there, Mickey. Nice to see Welcome you. Welcome back, Mickey. Thank you very much. It's nice to be back. Uh, this has got to be a special weekend for you, the 10th anniversary of the trilogy. How does it feel to be here this weekend at the Hall of Fame on the 10th anniversary? I'm glad to be here. I'm um, so happy for the total getting in. You know, it's incredible. Uh, and, uh, you know, we were never really good friends until the end. I mean, obviously I had respect for him when I was fighting him, but it didn't, I didn't just kind of shook his hand and, you know, he was a good guy. I still want to beat him up, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, after the fights were over, we, you know, just came myself and we became really good friends, you know, and and it's just a shame that he's not here to enjoy this it weekend really, really is with a everybody, shame. you know, and uh you know that that's the part that hurts the most, you yeah. know. Gotta get up on Facebook. Thank you so much. Uh, right. Thank you. Well, I appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you.
Thank you. I tell people who want to see boxing, I say, watch the three fights. We're going to have Taro Gotti. Great photo, ain't it? Yeah. It's a shame. I'm going to go in and uh, I'm not sure if they got a Taro's plaque up yet, but if they do, I'm going to look at that. Look at all the plaques and things like that. So. Hey. How you doing? Good, thank you. Mickey, thank you guys uh, very much. One question. Do you guys want to do this again? Uh, I would love to. I would love to uh, get a rematch if it's possible. And uh, I think we should do it again. We can do what we're doing. You're getting <laughs> most of the money is what you're trying to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, can, we, can, we can talk, you know. <laughs> we even wanted it's, it's a great fight and two great warriors, you know. It's honest, honesty, and uh, he's an honest guy. It's a great fight together. I think we should do it again. It took a little bit of negotiating, but both sides agreed that the rematch would take place quickly, just six months after the first fight. For Mickey Ward, it would be the first million dollar purse of his career. I was like, man, finally, finally, after all these years of ups and downs and sideways and this ways and that ways, and like it's unheard of a guy making a million dollars with 11 losses. It's unheard of. For Toro Gatti, there wasn't a lot of time to recover and get back to focusing on the strategy he'd abandoned in the slugfest. He felt that, you know, if I'm in better condition, um, I'll be okay. And if I can be in great shape, all I gotta do is box him and I can win the fight. That's what I gotta do. Gatti Ward 2 would be scheduled for 10 rounds again, but under brighter lights at Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City with 12,000 screaming fans double the crowd in the first fight, hoping the sequel would be just as incredible. You really can't describe it. It's, it's better than a dream. You understand? Because you're part of something that people will never forget. Walking out there into the ring was like crazy. So many people yelling, screaming, high-fiving you walking by, and it was like, whoa. We could see in front of our eyes this bond starting to form. It was a bond of pain and respect, and uh, it couldn't be uh, written in a script. It had to be seen live, seen happening in front of our eyes. He goes, Coach, we got this. He winked at me, so we got this, Coach. We did everything right. Mickey Ward and Arturo Gatti start again with what may or may not be round 11 of their hellacious 10-round fight in May of this year. Early in the rematch, it was apparent that Gaddy was able to go to school on the first fight. Gaddy quicker than Ward, more assertive than Ward, surer of what he wants to do. And just as important, this time Gaddy stuck to his game plan, and it paid off in the third round. There's a quick right hand by Gaddy, and Mickey Ward goes down. You don't see that very often. See, I throw the jab down, and he caught me in the ear. Now my legs are gone. I don't even, I'm like, I thought I was out on the boardwalk, I think. <laughs> and I remember Mickey falling face first in the, to the turnbuckle, which was right into our corner. So I could look in his eyes and I could see, oh man, he's, he's on Queer Street, you know? Which he never seen Mickey Ward before. That's when my hand was up, the towel was going in. Why I didn't throw the towel in, I don't know. He drunk as a skunk there. I give Mickey Ward a count, and I'm observing and making sure that his eyes is clear. Even though, you know, his legs are a little wobbled. Picking Ward off with a solid right-hand shot. Let's see if Arturo can finish. 
And Nicky's, you know, he's trying to defend himself. So I let the fight go. Once I seen Nicky hit his stomach, he pounded his stomach, I was like, oh, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> he's such a sick person. Like he asked for more. Nicky Ward is very wobbly. He has no legs, but he's got a ton of heart. What happened, I was out of it so bad that he threw a jab, he lined me up, he went boom, 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 with a right hand, he caught me on the button. That woke me up. I wasn't dazed no more. So he knocked me out and woke me up the same round. <laughs> That's the truth. In my mind, Gaddy still isn't quite sure, like, why is this guy standing here? What is this Ward character doing? I don't quite understand this person, except he's way too much like me. Until it's like, you know, what they want me to do, kill him? I would have loved to tell him, you gotta hit him. <laughs> you know, because a lot of this stuff is being blocked. Momentarily stopped, Gaddy in his tracks. Now he lands the left hook to deliver. Gaddy's frozen. Arturo's hands momentarily froze as Mickey Ward nailed him with that body shot. They give us perfect storms, and here's another one. Gaddy Ward 2 already lives up to expectations. It might have looked like Ward had gotten back some momentum. But Gaddy's big right hand had shattered his eardrum. Which meant for the rest of the night, to Mickey, the ring never stopped spinning. It's a miracle, a miracle that he got up and he fought the way he fought. Because he had no balance. You know, that guy's balls were bigger than basketballs. Gaddy is the boxer tonight. He's done an excellent job of boxing. That was the plan. That is the formula. We're trying to avoid what took place in New England. The damage of a head-on-head -head confrontation. It was pretty much not survival mode, but it was just basically catch-up. Because if, if even if there was a game plan, I wouldn't have remembered it anyway. <laughs> I was so fucked up, I was like... I didn't... Lucky I knew I was in a goddamn ring. <laughs> as much as Arturo went to toe-to-toe -to -toe with every other guy, this is not the guy. As much as he was ahead on points, he knew at any point that fight can turn on one punch. So he had to be careful all the way through to the final bell. Come on, baby. Arturo, don't look for the knockout. Let's just pile up points, okay? I'm gonna stop it then. Are you not all right? I'm gonna cut it off. Push him the fuck back. I'm gonna stop it. Push him. Yeah, I say, fuck you. You're gonna stop. I'll fucking kill you. He goes, I, I want to go out. Well, I'll get knocked out before I stop. The first fight was like a head-on collision. This is more of a of a one-car accident. The, the zone that he was in was just, you can't describe it. You really can't. He was just in that zone. You can see in his face, his energy. And he was just like, that night he could have took on the world. Round 20. After 19 rounds of unbelievable combat between Mickey Ward and Arturo Gatti, this one begins with a hug for the two fighters at center ring. And I mean, to see two fighters hug, it was such an emotional, t telling moment, you know. Only prize fighters can truly understand what they put themselves through. I think with Gaddy and Ward, in some sense, they were soulmates. Show them the love. Proud on its feet, in proper tribute to the two most compelling boxing performers of the year. Two guys who have given crowds, both in New England and here in Atlantic City, nights at the ring that they'll never, ever forget. Even with the shattered eardrum, Ward had gone the distance. But when the scorecards were read, Gaddy was the winner by a wide unanimous decision. I was kind of like depressed that I had lost and lost in that fashion. Uh, had I not got hurt like that with that punch, maybe it would have been different. But I remember I wanted a third fight because I knew I could do better. It was only a letdown if you treated yourself to the fantasy that 
every time they fought, it was going to be Gaddy Ward won. Um, that just isn't possible. Arturo, in particular, performed memorably uh, that night, and that despite the wide scores, the crowd in Boardwalk Hall had gotten exactly what it wanted. And oh, by the way, one win apiece. So you knew what was coming next. One of the best parts of Hall of Fame weekend is the annual Banquet of Champions Saturday night. More than a thousand people show up, including some folks who weren't going to miss a chance to honor Arturo Gatti. Hey, hon. Oh, it's so good to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Doing good. Nice to see you. you. Excellent. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. How are you doing? Oh, it's time, man. Oh, good. 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 Everything. Thank you. Put your hands together for this Hall of Famer, legendary Mr. Jake LaMotta! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the pride of Lowell, Massachusetts, the fighter, Irish Mickey Ward! fighting that total three times and just getting to know him after was even more exciting for me. He was a great kid. Uh, you know, I can't say enough about him. Um, I want to say hi to his, his mom that came down tonight. He told Gaddy's mom. His family, Pat Lynch, his manager, all of them, I mean, they all come down and support him. I think it's great and uh, I mean, I'll be talking tomorrow so I'll leave it for that. But uh, Thanks for all coming, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. But uh, there are not too many guys like Mickey Ward around, that's for sure. Do you think that a third fight between you is warranted? Well, uh, I have to thank God we're both healthy. We fought a great fight tonight. It's 1-1, one -one, so a third one I wouldn't mind. Going into the third one, there was a little bit of a stall in the negotiation between the promoters. And I remember Arturo speaking to Arturo. He said, hey, what's going on? And he word on the fight. I said, ah, we're going to you know, start looking. Maybe look at somebody else right now. We're at a stall, and he stopped me. He goes, listen, call Kathy. You make the fight. Mickey gave me my shot. He gets the shot. I'm not fighting anybody else. So you could let her know. He wanted to literally help Mickey out and give him that, that third fight. And that was his priority. And, uh, and therefore, you know, in the end, he, he made the decisions on who he was going to fight next. So, uh, so he fought Mickey. But Mickey was now 37. And dealing with a wife who had already seen her husband take enough beatings for a lifetime, even before he met Gaddy in the ring. What's it worth? You know, you could die in the ring. What he endured in such a short amount of time with a Toro is not human. You know, I told her, I said, this is it. Everyone knew I was at that point where, you know, I had gone to the well, you know, probably one too many times. You know what I mean? And, uh, Enough is enough, you know. All the money in the world is not worth it if you're not coherent. You could have $10 million. If you can't enjoy it, what good is it? And I knew I was going to go out just one last time, give it my all, and that's what I did, and then fought that last one. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. We welcome you to this very special edition of HBO's World Championship Boxing. Special because you're going to see the third installment of a trilogy which already ranks among the best in the 110-year history of gloved prize fighting. By the third one, those two guys knew each other better than their mothers knew them because they had experienced each other at levels no one else could. How do you become... 
become beloved and the star and wealthy in the sport of boxing having lost 12 fights you can only do it one way you have to fight the way mickey ward fights it's like nothing that i've experienced because now you're talking about all the reporters you're talking about the cameras and we're talking about a local hero and we're talking about a one-on-one it was, it was, it was outstanding, you know. Round 21 of Gaddy Ward began just six months after round 20 ended. Their third 10-round fight in a little more than a year. Gaddy showing the movement and speed which carried him to victory in the second fight here. At first I was thinking, you know, oh man, not this. You know, I've been for a long night tonight. You gotta be more active, man. Come on, be active. It's the last fight of your career, man. Fight hard, baby. But this is boxing. That's what we signed up for. Uh, Mickey Ward doesn't look too good at this point in time. All right, Duro's beating him up. No, he's beating him in every way. Again, third one starts like one and two. Boxing beautiful. Everything's great. First three rounds. I believe it's the fourth round. He throws a punch to Mickey's hip, and he catches him on the hip bone. And I could see him grimace. We're wondering if Arturo may have hurt his right hand again. He grimaced in pain and hasn't thrown the right hand since. I'm kind of watching him, noticing that he must have thrown 20, 30 jabs in a row and no right hand. And that's when I was like, oh, shit, I hope it's not broke. Because, you know, how do you fight Mickey Ward with one hand? It's impossible. Appears almost certain at this point that Arturo Gatti feels as though he's broken his right hand. And Mickey Ward has taken advantage to pound him. Oh, I says, thank God. It's our turn now. Ward's back in it now. Back in it in a big way. Yet he's showing great courage as he tries to get Ward off of him with one hand. Okay. All right, now we got a little, we balanced out the books here. Mickey Ward uh, ruptured his eardrum and lost his equilibrium in the second fight. Now you lost one of your hands. Well, almost like the, the gods at boxing looking down and saying, okay, you both got some dents now. Well, let's see what happens. He comes out, gets on his toes, starts boxing again, looks fine. How about the courage it takes for Arturo to be throwing right hands at this point? Unbelievable. And all of a sudden he gets hit and goes down. Down goes Arturo on a wide swinging right hand. And round six has come to a close. Mickey Ward, who was falling behind on points now has a leg up to get back into the fight. Any other fight, <clears throat> when I knock him down, I come out the next round, I'd try to, I knew you'd still be hurt, so I'd be right on top of you. But when I came out in the seventh round, I think it was, I had, I had gotten old in one round. Everything come out. I felt like I was walking, I felt, I felt like I was in quicksand. Mickey might have felt like he was sinking, but he wasn't gonna stop moving forward, straight at Gaddy. They go to that level of unconsciousness where um, both guys are just going to bring it, whatever it is they've got, whatever they can show in terms of their pride, their desire, their will to try to win the fight. Look at Arturo firing that broken right hand. Ward waits for him to finish and then stages his own assault. Mickey Ward oh, left up, up, by left left up. Left up. Can Gaddy follow up? I never thought I would see anything as exciting as the first fight. The most overused word in sports commentary is incredible. This is another incredible fight. Beautiful round. Beautiful round, baby. I knew my soldier had a little bit more bullets in his gun than Mickey. And Mickey was still Mickey, but his punches wasn't as crisp. The pressure wasn't as constant. So you can see it. You can see the wear and tear. You know, when you're sitting there watching it and, and you see them going back and forth, you know, you see them taking shots. But when you really analyze it, the punishment that both guys took in those fights, I don't know how a human being can stand it. Really, it's just unbelievable to watch. It's scary. This is the 30th round of a majestic trilogy. At this point now, 
you're Arturo's team and you love him and you want him to succeed, but now you've become friends with Mickey and his team and you love him too. And now you don't want to see anybody get hurt. So the, the, the emotions going to this last fight and particularly to that last round were just so different. When we started out and it was us against them and by the time it ended, it was just us. Faster than would any title fight in the sport. The only title they fight for is the memory of their great three fights against each other. This is called getting your money's worth. And they rise again in Boardwalk Hall. We come together and we kind of hugged and it's like, I love you, man, you know? Their hugging each other was what everyone watching the fight wanted to do. They emptied themselves for us, gave up a piece of their lives for us. Um, thanks, guys. This is why we do it. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Irish Mickey Ward and Arturo Thunderdotty. On the scorecards, it was closer than the second fight. But another unanimous decision for Gaddy. Still, in the ring after, it felt like both guys were celebrating together. I think they both understood in their own ways the historic significance of what they had just gone through. It was just special to go through with someone like him. For my last fight of my life. You know, obviously I didn't win the fight, but well, more importantly, I made a friend for life. Arturo, Mickey, thank you very much. Did, did either of you suspect that, you, that this fight would be as intense as the first fight between you? Larry, like I said before, uh, the fight meeting, I know what type of man Mickey Ward is, and I knew he was coming in tonight to fight his best fight of his life. And if it would have been anybody else, they would have quit. And Mickey Ward hurt me in the third, fourth round. I hurt my hand in the third round, but Mickey Ward is unbelievable. He's got a heart. And for someone that wants to retire, he, held, he fought a hell of a fight. You know, my little brother accomplished a lot in life. You know? He went out on top with the Toro, you know? You know? I think it gave the boxing world a whole nother respect, like the way the fighters could treat each other. <laughs> I think deep in their hearts, did it really matter who won the third fight? Or was it more about honoring the way they were and the way they did what they did? And believe me, you know, I think you could pull 100 devoted boxing fans who were uh, avid watchers of that rivalry right now and ask them who won the three fights and I'm guessing less than 40 percent would be able to tell you that Arturo won fights two and three and Mickey won number one people don't remember that they remember the sacrifice the combat the mayhem and the love and that's really what this rivalry provided I didn't pick this school. Hey, I'm ready to say that now. 30 years later. Bow down, everybody. Bow down for Mickey Ward. Like the other fights, Ward's night would end at a local hospital. And as the doctors examined him, Mickey found out he wasn't the only guy in the emergency room who'd come from Boardwalk Hall. The Dr. Margles, he had, he had slid the curtain open. He goes, I think somebody wants to say hi to you. You got a side, you got a side, you all right? Oh, yeah. Got a side, huh? Yeah, thank you. Right. Who do you think's on the other bed of him? Totoro. 
The first words out of his mouth, it ain't like, it wasn't no, like, good fight, this, that. First thing out of his mouth was, goes, Mick, you okay? First thing. And I just remember standing sort of in the corner looking at these two guys saying, now let me get this right. You just dedicated, you know, 30 rounds uh, to, to putting each other in these gurneys. And the first thing you think to ask them is, hey, Mick, you all right? And it just sort of said everything uh, about them. Hey, Mick, how you feeling, baby? Good. Good. While Ward's career was over, Gaddy was going to keep fighting. But for the first fight after the trilogy, he decided he wanted a familiar face to be there with him. He goes, you know what would be great? If Mickey would be part of my entourage and walk me in, you think he would do it? I said, I think it's a great idea. I said, I think you should call him. And look at Mickey Ward, Gaddy's rival in three spectacular fights. Gaddy brings Ward into the ring with him. He became Arturo Gaddy's number one fan. Nobody else was bigger. Nobody else. He was it. He was the man. You know, we could have been enemies after, but we became best friends. Out of trying to kill each other, we became one, you know? I went and pounded some beers with those guys on many an occasion um, after that trilogy. Now, Mickey already had that thick Boston accent. Arturo had this French-Canadian kind of thing going, mixed in with a little bit of New Jersey. And when they would, like, pound them, the accents would just get more pronounced. I think both of us, we talk fast, especially you totally get that, nah, 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 get that squeaky, like, thing. And our minds is like that, too. <laughs> especially with a couple of beers in us, you know, it's, then forget it. And it's like, we're talking, like, I don't even know what language. We got our, but we got our own. You know what I mean? We're talking, and people look at us going, what the hell are they saying? You know what I mean? They had been so similar when they stepped in the ring. But the later it got at night, Gaddy was definitely the wilder one. I've known quite a number of fighters who could party really hard. I've spent some uh, very long entertaining evenings with fighters who were pushing themselves to the limit in that regard the same way they would push themselves uh, to the limit in the ring. There was nobody like Arturo. My wife and I would always worry if the phone rang at 3 in the morning, you know, hoping it was just him looking to extend the credit card or ask for a few dollars and hope he wasn't in trouble. <laughs> but, yeah, we worried, we worried, you know, like he was another child of ours for sure. I'm uh, at home. I get a call around, I don't know what time it is, but the Toro fell asleep at the wheel and hit the Holland Tunnel. Boom, he hit the Holland Tunnel. So they, they go through his um, phone. The only number they recognize the name is me. And the guy calls me up, the state trooper. He goes, this, uh, Mickey Ward, he goes, yeah. He goes, he goes, can, um, you have to come down and, uh, can you come down and pick a tow of Gaddy up? He hit the hole in the tunnel. We, we don't want, we're, we're going to tow his car. Can you get him? I'm like, I can't get him. I said, I'm, I'm in Massachusetts. <laughs> he fell asleep at the wheel or something, hit the hole in the tunnel. <laughs> yeah. By 2006, Three years after his last fight with Ward, Gaddy was taking bigger beatings than ever. It's getting brutal in there as Mayweather fires at will. Another big that's shot, it. and this time Arturo Gaddy is ruined. They're stopping it, and thank heaven. It wasn't his heart that gave out, it was his body. Most around him wanted him to retire, including Buddy McGirt. He still wanted to fight. I felt that that was it. I'm like, what do you have to, what's the purpose of fighting? You don't need the money. You've already stamped your legacy. Leave it alone. And he didn't want to agree with that. So and that was that. And he gave me a hug. That was the last time I seen him. But even with his trainer gone, Gaddy still wanted another shot. He begged. He said, I just want one more. Let me have one more fight. Uh, that, that's all I want. You know, I, I swear, if, you know, if I don't look good, I'll be done, even if I win. So I got a call from a mutual friend in Boston, and he said, you know, Mickey's training fighters up in Boston. I said, are you serious? He said, yeah. So I remember calling Arturo. I said, guess who's training fighters now? He said, who? I said, Mickey Wood. He goes, you think he'll train me? I said, well, that's why I'm calling you. I said, call him up. He said, I'm going to call him right now. <laughs> Yo, Mick, what are you doing? You, you want to come to your training camp? 
he was, uh, and he was saying, what do you mean? He says, you want to train me? And, and after a while, it's like, he's not answering back. I'm like, why, you don't want to do it? You don't like it? <laughs> but I'm sure afterwards, when he hung up, he was like, yo, I'm yeah. trying to throw a guy. I wasn't going to teach him how to fight. I was basically there to motivate him, get him going. Good I'm not going to teach him how to throw a left hook or a right hand. Or Come on, he's not throw it better than me. You know what I'm going to teach him? I was just there to motivate him. I remember saying to myself, can you believe this is where it's come, to how it's like come full circle like this? Here they are, not knowing each other, fighting, getting in this trilogy, to walking us in the ring, being part of the team, and ending it as the head trainer. I mean, it's, uh, it's something a movie should be made of, you know? Really great stuff. But there was going to be no storybook finish. We're watching the destruction of an action hero. This looks like the end of the road as a significant fighter. No man, it's a thunderous right hand puts Gatti down. It was just, it was just hard to see, you know. Um, the last, I'd rather not have the last thought seeing him like that would see him happy, you know what I mean? But, you know, I just keep the good thoughts in my head about him. After the fight, Gatti announced his retirement directly to his fans. I just want to say that I love you guys. I really tried hard tonight, and uh, you know how, hard, how big my heart is that I just couldn't do it, and I give my best. And I love you guys for supporting me for tough, and, and, uh, for tough times for me, and uh, you guys brought, my, brought me back and made me win the second world title. I love you guys, and thank you very much, and uh, I had a great time doing it. And again, so much heart, even talking as the lip is opening up and bleeding. Arturo, thanks for the memories. Tough to watch. What is it? just that, that he's not here no more, you know. It's, he was taken too, too early in his life. It was so sad. Could be enjoying all this now, you know. Terrible. Boxer Arturo Gatti was a legendary tough guy, but even tough guys are not indestructible. Gatti found dead at a luxury seaside resort in Brazil today. A police investigator says it's unclear how the 37-year-old died, but, quote, it's all very strange. I was just in shock. Shock. Can't believe it. No. Still can't believe it. Yeah. He asked himself, why? I mean, why? How? I mean, I mean, what? It's, it's, you can't even put it in words. Nearly two years to the day after his last fight, they found his body in a pool of blood the morning after a late night out in a Brazilian beach town. His wife, Amanda, who he had married a year and a half earlier, was arrested for murder. Soon, reports came out about marital trouble and a change that had been made to Gaddy's will, leaving all his assets to his new wife. But three weeks after he died, the authorities in Brazil ruled the death a suicide, saying Gaddy had hanged himself. The wife was released from prison, and she made a statement claiming that her husband had been depressed and abusing drugs. The ruling didn't sit well with Gaddy's inner circle or the Canadian government, which led to more investigations and independent autopsies. But altogether, they were inconclusive, which left the cause of death officially a suicide. Even if to the people who knew Toro Gatti best, it's still a mystery. It's really hard because, you know, it happened in a foreign country. It's, you know, there's really not much cooperation down there. They did what they felt was their investigation, and uh, it's kind of closed on their end. And there's so many conflicting stories. No one really knows the truth of what happened. But, you know, I, I believe in my heart, no one knew him better than me in his adult life. I can guarantee you that Arturo Gatti didn't take his life that night in Brazil. He was killed. He was murdered. I never believe it, that he, he did that. Took his own life, never. He had a son that he loved to, to death. He had a daughter, Sophia, that he loved to death. Two kids. 
He wouldn't do it. No way. You don't see it. See in the pictures, which were difficult to look at, and, and, and he just, you know, he finally looked like this crumpled little guy. Uh, but you looked at it and you said, that's not Arturo Gatti, that's somebody else. Uh, because you will always remember him and Mickey Ward standing there in the middle of the ring, hugging each other, and then pow! And uh, that's the way I want to remember him. It, the funeral was uh, kind of another one of these reunions where everybody got together again, except it was awful. All the same people that used to sit at the bar together and, and, and celebrate before and after each fight, you know, all back together again, and yet without him. And I remember the thing I'll never forget is we walked through the, uh, past, past the coffin the last time. Um, I was standing right behind Mickey. And as Mickey went by, he touched the coffin with like a little left hook. He said, you know, I got you last. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, he's just someone that was full of life, you know, to see him like laying there. It's just hard, you know? Yeah, hard. Of course, we had a tragic ending. The trilogy will live on, and Arturo Gatti will live on for a long time. And maybe in some way, uh, his tragic ending was just a part of that great script in the sky. After the Hall of Fame banquet, the party Saturday night keeps going at Graziano's restaurant, like it always does. And two old friends are happy for more time to catch up and reminisce. Oh, he hit me! <laughs> Pat Lynch has brought along his family to listen to the stories. And then the best was before Gene Luca Brock are after you. Yeah. And I remember him saying to me, standing in the ring, he goes, he's looking across the ring, and I'm like, what's up? He goes, I'm just so happy it ain't Mickey Ward across the ring right now. Because <laughs> well, yours was the only face he's seen for two years. <laughs> I know, huh? <laughs> yeah. Right? Those were fun times. Dan Raphael called me up the other day, and I said, I said, the sad thing is they were supposed to grow old together and tell war stories. Yeah, I know. Right? right? The two of them sitting on a porch saying, You could have been doing it. I did this now. to you, you did this to you. Know? Yeah. It's sad. It makes us sad. Oh, but still very hard every day. It is. It's like, you know. They stayed talking till about one in the morning, when it's time to head back to get some rest for tomorrow. After two rainy days, the sun finally shines on Canastota Sunday for the Hall of Fame induction. The official ceremony and speeches come in the afternoon. But in the morning, everything gets going on Peterborough Street. They call it the Parade of Champions. All the legends and stars in town recognized and remembered for what they'll always mean to the sport. And here's our finalist for the 
I'd like to call on Ida Gotti, Pat Lynch, Kathy Duva, and Mickey Ward to honor Arturo Gotti. Thank you, Mom. I fought a total three times my last three fights, and um, we had three, two fights of the year, 30 rounds of non-stop action. Um, it's funny how I, I became great friends with him after we fought, because he was a great person. Obviously, he's a great fighter, he's getting inducted. And uh, shows the support that he has here, how, how good of a person he was, and how great of a fighter he was. And uh, I miss him to death every day, and I think about him every day at some point in time. But, He's just, he's always with me, I know he's here. And um, with you guys coming out and supporting all the fame, Toro, all the rest of the champions. I mean, this is what it's all about. I want to thank everyone for coming out. Like, like Toro, Daddy, the little girl right here, and that, she'll have this memory for life. Thank you. I just want to thank every, everyone for coming. Uh, this is a tough moment for all of us, his family and friends that are sitting here. Um, Arturo would never give up. He'd never throw in a towel. Arturo Gotti never quit in the ring. And I can guarantee you, he never quit in life. <laughs> I was honored and privileged to have been his manager for his entire career but I'm more honored and privileged to have called him my friend. Thank you. He used to talk about wanting to be here in the Hall of Fame. He spoke about it often. He knew he'd have critics who didn't think he belonged here. He truly understood the competing arguments about why he should or should not be. But he is up in heaven today, and I hope he knows that one of his dreams has truly come through because Arturo Gatti dared greatly. And for that, we will never, ever forget him. Thank you. Arturo Gatti would have been 41 years old when he was inducted into the Boxing Hall of Fame on June 9th, 2013. For his friend, Mickey Ward, representing him that day, may be the closest he'll ever come to getting in. That kind of thing matters in history, sure. But what they did together, matters a whole lot more. I mean, all of my dreams seem to fall by the side like a discarded thought or the day of life. But I know what it is like to just see you today. No break, no break. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh
like when stars align and just boom. That was me and him. For what reason? I don't know. <laughs> Only the man above knows that, you know. A total will be a part of me forever. The memories will be in my mind forever, you know. Uh, our fights will be in my head forever. They'll be linked forever throughout boxing history together, you know. Uh, so I'll be, I'll be, we'll be together forever. Presentation of HBO Sports.